What is a motherboard? Motherboard? Like when she tells that story that I've heard like a hundred times about when I was young and crayon up the nose. And man, I just wish she'd stop telling that story. Ha! <laughs> That's a joke. No, where the CPU or the central processing unit is colloquially referred to as the brain of a PC, the motherboard or the main board is often described as the backbone. It's the component in a PC, and for that matter, pretty much any other electronic device, whether it's a game console, CE device, a piece of industrial equipment, or a cell phone, that contains all the slots that everything else goes into. All right, so how do I find it? Well, that's usually pretty easy because it's the largest PCB or printed circuit board inside the device, and it's covered in slots, connectors, chips, and other electronic doodads. At its very core, a motherboard is just a bare PCB and contains no actual processing power. It relies on other processors like the CPU and GPU, which are sometimes socketed in and at other times soldered on directly to perform all of the actual work and give life to your device. But that doesn't make it simple. Motherboard designers are tasked not with creating a simple platform onto which everything else will be stuck like Lego, but rather with crafting an infrastructure for some of the fastest and most delicate electronics imaginable. Even though the majority of the other components used in the system aren't manufactured by the motherboard maker, they are responsible often for choosing these components for their placement and configuration and making sure that every signal will be sent where it's needed, interpreted correctly, then then pass to where it needs to go, and all of this without excess interference. Even something as seemingly trivial as a single trace that's a little bit too long can cause one electrical signal to be a little bit late and another a little bit early and cause instability. That's why you'll sometimes see little zigzag patterns in the traces on a PCB. Those aren't for beauty, they're not for looks. Everything about a motherboard is highly functional. A motherboard also isn't purely hardware either. There's a software or firmware component. On a PC, this is referred to as a BIOS or UEFI, and is often the difference between a good motherboard and a great motherboard. This software acts as a way for the manufacturer to correct small bugs that are inevitable with something so complex, and to add functionality in the future. It also serves as a way for the user to alter settings or tweak them for optimal functionality. On consumer electronics, this software component also exists, but it's normally not user accessible. All right, so what if my motherboard dies, which might even be why you're sitting here watching this video? Well, for consumer electronics and phones and whatnot, you're often hooped. If you can find a new one, there are often extremely fragile cables and connectors attached to them. And if you can't find a detailed guide on a site like iFixit, for example, I would recommend leaving it to the pros. For a PC, life is a bit simpler. Many PCs use industry standard components, including the motherboard, but many others use proprietary and expensive alternatives. So the only way to find out for sure is to contact your manufacturer directly, but there's a good chance that you'll be able to get your hands on something. Once you've got a new one, replacing a PC motherboard is, in many cases, not difficult, but it can be time consuming and tedious, and will usually involve removing pretty much every other component in the system in order to extract it and replace it. The good news is you can check out one of the excellent PC build guides on my other channel, and that'll tell you pretty much everything you need to know about installing a motherboard. Any other questions you might have can likely be answered on the LinusTechTips.com forum where people are friendly and happy to help. Speaking of friendly and happy to help, Hotspot Shield takes special care of our community members and has been not only a sponsor of our videos, but also a supporter of the users we refer to them. Complaints and questions from folks on the Linus Tech Tips forum are easy for me to escalate and get resolved. So. I guess that's great, but what exactly is Hotspot Shield, you might ask? Well, it's an easy to use VPN service, which is basically a way of obscuring your IP from the sites you're visiting. This can be helpful if you want to make your footsteps more difficult to track, if you want to keep others from easily finding out your location and identity, or even if you just want to bypass geographical restrictions such as sites that are blocked in your region or services that vary from one place to another like Netflix. So yay, US Netflix for all. They have a free trial of their elite service, which you can find in the link in the video description and if you like it, you can use offer code Linus to save 20% on your first purchase. Thanks for watching this episode as fast as possible, guys. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment and let me know what you thought, because I do read the comments for the most part. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to TechQuickie for more videos like this from me.